not long pardon you. The two words were so much alike. They were. They still are, though years have rolled over their heads. But this afternoon, my obligation ceases. Individually, I love you all with affection unspeakable. <laughs> but collectively, I look upon you with a disgust that amounts to absolute detestation. <laughs> oh, pity me, my beloved friends, for such is my sense of duty that once out of my indentures, I shall feel bound to devote myself heart and soul to your extermination. Poor oh, lad! Poor oh, lad! Well, Frederick, do you conscientiously feel that it is your duty to destroy us? We cannot blame you for acting on that conviction. Always act in accordance with the dictates of your conscience, my boy, and uh, chance the consequences. <laughs> Besides, we can offer you but little temptation to remain with us. We can't seem to make piracy pay. I'm sure I don't know why, but we don't. I know why, but alas, I mustn't tell you. Huh? It wouldn't be right. Why not? It is only uh, half past 11, and you're one of us until the clock strikes 12. True, and until then, you are bound to protect our interests. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well then, it is my duty as a pirate to tell you that you are too tender-hearted. Oh, oh, For instance, you make a point of never attacking a weaker party than yourselves. When you attack a stronger party, you invariably get thrashed. There is some truth in that. Then again, you make a point of never harming an orphan. Oh, 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 we are orphans! Oh, we are orphans ourselves! And we know what it is! <laughs> yes, but it has got about. What is the consequence? Everyone we capture says he's an orphan. <laughs> The last three ships we took proved to be manned entirely by orphans. Oh, and so we had to let them go. One would think that Great Britain's mercantile navy was recruited solely from our orphan asylums. Which we know is not the case. Oh, but hang it all, you wouldn't have us absolutely merciless. Yeah. There's my difficulty. Until 12 o'clock, I would. Yeah. After 12, I wouldn't. Uh, Was ever a man placed in so delicate a situation? And Ruth, your own Ruth, whom you love so well and who has won her middle-aged way into your boyish heart, <laughs> what is to become of her? Uh, he, he will take you with him, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ruth, I feel some little difficulty about you. It is true, I admire you very much. But I have been consciously at sea since I was eight years old, and yours is the only woman's face I have seen during that time. I think it is a sweet face. <laughs> it is, oh, it is. I say I think it is. That is my impression. But as I have never had an opportunity of comparing you with other women, it is just possible I made a mistake. <laughs> True. What a terrible thing it would be if I were to marry this innocent person and then find out that she is, on the whole, plain. Oh, Ruth is very well. Uh, very well indeed. <laughs> yeah, yes, there are the remains of a fine woman of that room. Do you really think so? I do. Then I will not be so selfish as to take her from you uh, in justice to her and in consideration for you I will leave her behind. Oh, no, 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 hey, no, no, hey, no, hey, no, Frederick, no, this cannot be. We are rough men. Rough! We live a rough life. <laughs> rough! But we, we are not so utterly heartless as to deprive thee of thy love. No. I think I am right in saying that uh, there's not one here who would deliberately rob thee of this inestimable treasure for all the world holds dear. Not one! I thought there was. Keep thy love, Frederick. Keep thy love. You're very good, I'm sure. Well, uh, Frederick, it is top of the tide that we must be on. Uh, yes. Yes. Farewell, Frederick. And when your process of extermination begins, let our deaths be as swift and painless as you can conveniently make them. I will. But 
the love I have for you, I swear it. Would that you could render this extermination unnecessary by accompanying me back to civilization. No, Frederick, this, this cannot be. I do not think much of our profession, but contrasted with respectability, it is comparatively honest. No, Frederick. I shall live and die a pirate king. <laughs> oh, better far to live and die under the brave black flag I fly. They play a sanctimonious part with a pirate head and a pirate heart. Away to the cheating world go you, where pirates all are well to do. But I'll be true to the song I sing and live and die a pirate king. I am a pirate king, and it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king, for I am a pirate king. It is a pirate king, it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. It is a pirate king. Sally forth to seek my prey. I help myself in a royal way. I sink a few more ships, it's true, than a well bred monarch ought to do. But many a king on a first class throne, if he wants to call his crown his own, must manage somehow to get through. More dirty work than ever I do. For I am a pirate king. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. For I am a pirate king. It is a pirate king. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. It is a long, a pirate king, a long, a pirate king. Away! I will be quite candid with you. You are very dear to me, as you know, but I must be circumspect. You see, you are considerably older than I. A lad of 21 usually looks for a wife of 17. A wife of 17? You will find me a wife of a thousand. No, but I shall find you a wife of 47. That is quite enough. <laughs> Ruth, tell me candidly and without reserve, Compared with other women, how are you? I will answer you truthfully, Master. <coughs> I have a slight cold, but otherwise I am quite well. I am sorry for your cold, but I was referring rather to your personal appearance. Compared with other women, are you beautiful? I have been told so, dear Master. Ah, but lately? No, years and years ago. What do you think of yourself? It is a delicate question to answer, but I think I am a fine woman. That is your candid opinion? D yes, I would be deceiving you if I were to tell you otherwise. Thank you.
Jules. I believe you. I am sure you have not practiced upon my inexperience. I wish to do the right thing. And if, say, if you really are a fine woman, your age shall be no obstacle to our union. <laughs> Hark! Surely I hear voices. Who has ventured to approach our all but inaccessible land? Can it be Custom House? No, it does not sound like Custom House. Confusion! It is the voices of young girls! If you should see them, I am lost! <laughs> By all that's marvelous, a baby of beautiful maidens! What refinement! Oh. And Ruth, Ruth told me she was beautiful. Oh, poor Swan, you have deceived me. I have deceived you. Yes, Ruth, you deceived me. You told me you were fair as gold. And master, am I not so? I'm sure I'm not a jotso. Upon my innocence you play. I'm not the one to plot so. Your face is light, your head is grey. It's gradually got so. Faith is moment to deceive me. Gentle maidens, I dare not show in this alarming costume. No, no, I must remain in close concealment until I can appear in decent clothes.
It is my bounden duty to inform you that your proceedings will not be unwitnessed. But who are you to speak? I am a pirate. A pirate? Ladies, do not shun me. This evening I renounce my vile profession. And to that end of pure and peerless maidens, to blushing hearts of ever blooming beauty, <laughs> I saw the heart, I saw the heart, enjoy your kind assistance. How pitiful his
Men who stick at no offenses, hear the one he hear. Why to see that dreadful trade is? Where you get you hence, old ladies, while the coast is clear. No, we must not lose our senses. If they stick at no offenses, we should not be here. Why to see the dreadful trade is? Nice companions for your ladies. Doctor! 
picturesque uniform, but I uh, am not familiar with it. What are you? Uh, we are all uh, single gentlemen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, yes, I gathered that. Anything else? Nope, nothing else. Yeah. 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 Do not believe him, Papa. There are pirates, the famous pirates of Pizan. <gasps>
I'm telling a terrible storm, but it doesn't diminish my glory. For they would have taken my daughters over the billowy waters. If I had it, and it gets fiction, indulge in an innocent fiction, which is not in the same category as telling a regular terrible story. He's telling a terrible story, just like a terrible story. It's one of the tickets, spots that have been filled with these waters. It is easy in the fiction, we call it an innocent fiction, but it comes in the same category as telling a regular terrible story. strife, we're always sorry to begin it, for what we ask is life without a touch of poetry in it.
find it with your conscience to say something that will relieve my father's sorrow? I will try, dear Mabel. But why does he sit night after night in this draughty old room? Why do I sit here? To escape from the pirate's clutches, I described myself as an orphan. And heaven help me, I am no orphan. I came here to humble myself before the tombs of my ancestors and to implore their pardon for having brought dishonor on the family of sculpture. <laughs> but you forget, sir. You only bought the property a year ago, and the stucco on your baronial castle is scarcely dry. Frederick, in this chapel, our ancestors, you cannot deny that. With the estate, I bought the chapel and its contents. Now, I don't know whose ancestors they were, but I know whose ancestors they are. And I shudder to think that their descendants might purchase, if I may so describe myself, should have brought disgrace upon what, I have no doubt, was an unstained discussion. <laughs> Be comforted, for had you not acted as you did, these reckless men would have assuredly called in the nearest clergyman and have married your large family on the spot. <laughs> I hope to have atoned for my involuntary association with the pestilent scourges by sweeping them from the face of the earth. And then, dear Mabel, you will be mine. Are your devoted followers at hand? They are. They only await my orders. Then, Frederick, let your escort lie in heart head. Be summoned to receive a general's blessing ere they depart upon their dread adventure. Dear sir, they come. Oh, 
are going to meet their fate in a highly nervous state. Still to us it's evident these tensions are unnecessary. Said if we could tell it him, 
how Frederick would the joke enjoy. And so we whisper, my friend, him to tell it to our boy. A paradox, a paradox, that most ingenious paradox. We quips and quibbles, heard in box, what's not to beat this paradox? A paradox, a paradox, a most ingenious paradox. Paradox. For some ridiculous reason, to which, however, I have no desire to be disloyal. Some person in authority, I don't know who, very likely the Astronomer Royal, has decided that, although for such a beastly month as February, 28 days as a rule are plenty, one year in every four, his date shall be reckoned as nine and twenty. Through some singular coincidence, I shouldn't be surprised if I were owing to the agency of an ill-natured fairy. You are the victim of this clumsy arrangement, having been born in leap year on the 29th of February. And so, through a simple arithmetical process, you shall easily discover that though you've lived 21 years, if we go by birthdays, you will only five and a little bit over. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yes, yes, with yours, my figures to work. <laughs> How quaint the ways of paradox. At common sense, she gaily mocks it. The counting in my usual way is 21. I've been alive. Yet reckoning by my day today. <laughs> Yet reckoning by my day today. I am a widow boy of five. A paradox, a paradox, a paradox, a paradox, a paradox, a Curious, most absurdly whimsical. <laughs> Five and a quarter. No one would think it to look at me. <laughs> you are glad now, I'll be bound, that you spared <laughs> us. You would never have forgiven yourself when you discovered that you had killed two of your comrades. <laughs> My comrades? Oh, I'm afraid you don't uh, appreciate the delicacy of your position. You were apprenticed to us. Until I reached my 21st year. No, no, no. Until you reached your 21st birthday. And going by birthdays, you were as yet only five and a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mean to say you are going to hold me to that. Oh, oh no. We, we, merely, we merely remind you of the fact and uh, leave the rest to your sense of duty. Your sense of duty? Don't put it on that footing. As I was merciful to you just now, be merciful to me. I implore you not to insist upon the letter of your bond, just as the cup of happiness is at my lips. We insist on nothing. We content ourselves with pointing out to you your oh. duty. Your duty? Well, you have appealed to my sense of duty. <laughs> and my duty is only too clear. I abhor your infamous calling. I shudder at the thought that I have ever been mixed up with it. But duty is before all. At any price, I will do my duty. Bravely spoken, boy. Come, you are one of us once more. Lead on, I follow. Oh, oh horror. What What's is the, the matter? matter? Ought I to tell you? No, no, I cannot do it. Well, Yet, as a member of your band, speak out, boy. Oh. I charge you by that sense of conscientiousness to which we have never yet appealed in vain. What? What? General Stanley, the father of my maiden. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. He escaped from you on the plea that he was an orphan. He did? Oh, yeah, yes, he did, yeah. 
It breaks my heart to betray the honored father of the girl I adore. Break it. What? But as your apprentice, I have no alternative. It is my duty to tell you that General Stanley Yes. Is, is no. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Why? Be a boy. Stop.
1940, I'll made shall be. I'll then return and claim you, I declare it. It seems so long. Swear that till then you will be true to me. Got it? They're going to go rolling around again. <laughs> nope. I don't want to again. <laughs> this is perplexing. We, we cannot, cannot understand, understand it at all. Step! As he is activated by his sense of That makes a difference, of course, 
At the same time, we repeat, we cannot understand it at all. No matter! Our course is clear! We must do our best to capture these pirates! Let's 
I see a light inside. The Major General comes so quickly hide. Yes, yes, the Major General comes. Yes, yes, the Major General comes. Yes, yes, the Major General comes. <laughs> Tormented with the anguish dread of falsehood unatoned, I lay upon my sleepless bed and tossed and turned and groaned. The man who finds his conscience ache no peace at all enjoys. And as I lay in bed awake, I thought I heard a noise. He thought he heard a noise. <laughs> On hill, my mind is set at ease. So still the scene, it must have been the sighing of the breeze. 
insane with the unparalleled publicity of what we have been longing for, unbounded domesticity. Tomorrow morning early we shall quickly be personified. Harmoniously coupled, conjugally matrimonified. And this shall be accomplished by the daughter of divinity. Happily resides in the immediate vicinity. Who happily resides in the immediate vicinity? Who happily resides in the immediate vicinity? Who happily resides in the immediate vicinity? Because my military knowledge, though I'm lucky in it, meant to has only been brought out with the beginning of the century. But still, in getting off my daughter's eight or nine or ten and all, I've shown myself the model of a modern agent general. Oh.